In this video, I'm going to be going through some security features behind Google Meet because one thing that was brought up was that students can join links to Google Meetings after everybody's left. They're still active. While this is true, there are some things that you can do to stop this from happening, but also there are some, I guess, not necessarily bad things that can happen, but some barriers that get in the way of people joining the correct meeting if you use some of these things. So the way Google gets around this currently, now that's as of today, this is April 23rd, so they're always adding new features, this may change, but in order to have a unique URL each time that ends that URL whenever you're done with it, you have to give the meeting a nickname. So let me explain my screen a little bit. On the left-hand side, I have my Stanley County Schools teacher account. On the right-hand side, I have a test student account. And then I'm going to get into personal accounts in just a minute, too. So as you'll notice, I have the option to join or start a meeting if I'm a teacher. If I'm a student, all I can do is join a meeting. I have to, I can't start a meeting, all I can do is join. So I'm going to give my meeting a nickname and it can be the same nickname over and over again but the thing is it has to be unique to you and your school let me explain let's say I just use the nickname of Brooks since that's my last name I'm going to use that well there are other people within the school system with the last name Brooks if they do the same thing we'll all be in the same meeting it doesn't tell me whether this nickname is being used because if you'll notice, I can either join or start a meeting. It, it kind of goes both ways. So if I have somebody that's already used that same nickname, we're going to all be in the same meeting. So it needs to be unique to the person. My suggestion for schools is include the school and include the last name and even the grade level because even within the same school, you have that. Or it could be that if you're high school, you might be doing English as the subject. So you might include the subject instead of grade level. That's something that you'll have to think about as you go forward because if you have colleagues that have the same last name as you and teach the same subject, that's just another issue with using nicknames. So I'm just going to do SES E Brooks. And when I do that, it's going to start the meeting this way. Let me just go ahead and turn off my camera and microphone because it's going to tell me there's a problem with it anyway since I've already got another meeting going on. So I'm joined here. If I'm a student, I have to go to meet.google.com and then I either have to have the meeting code, which for Google Meet, it tells you kind of that information to share, like so you can go through and tell other people about the meeting or you can tell them the name of the meeting so I'm going to type in SES E Brooks now here's the first downside if a student types that in incorrectly it'll either tell them that the meeting doesn't exist or they'll be in the wrong meetings place they won't know what's going on so that's the first downside there's no way to link this up where people click on it nothing so it allows me to start up and join the meeting now, whenever I do this, once everything ends, as soon as everybody leaves the meeting, that meeting link is now dead. So if I'm a student trying to rejoin the meeting, I'll go through and as long as I'm still on that same screen, it lets me go back to that same link. But notice, it says I can't join this video call. So being a crafty student, I'm going to go through and let me just type in that username again and see. Okay, oh man, it's going to let me join, but no, it won't let me join. So it doesn't matter whether you have the link to the URL to that meeting or whether you have the name. It won't let you back into that meeting as long as the teacher is not in there. Now, here's the other downside behind this. Let me pull up a personal account. A personal account, I have to have the meeting ID. It does not allow me to put in a name for the meeting because the name for the meeting only applies to Stanley County Schools accounts. So if you're in elementary grades 
or you have students using personal devices, they have to make sure they're signed into their Stanley County Schools account before they can access the meeting. So um, that may work for you, but that's the other downside is that you would have to provide the meeting link anyway for outside users to join in if you're allowing people to join using personal accounts. So to me, that's kind of a barrier because it's one more thing that we have to make sure is correct on the students end before they can join. But if that trade-off is good for the security purpose for you, then that's something that you may consider. The other thing is, it, once I join the same meeting again, it's going to give me a different URL. So once I have that, I can then share that information out. So I can share out this link. The thing is, you can't do this ahead of time. So you would have to be in the meeting before you would get that link. And that's just another barrier for getting an outside guest in or even students if you want them to be able to use the link. So that's the trade-off because I'll show you how this works for an external guest. Let me just type in the code. And then they're into the meeting. Now, once, if you notice, it's telling me that I have to ask to join. So I've asked to join, and then I have to admit that outside guest. If you don't know who that is, I would deny entry, not allowed. I'm going to admit the person, but then once everybody leaves again, then I can't go back and rejoin that same meeting. I can't go back to that same meeting link even as an outside user because it's going to tell me that I couldn't join it. So that's a way to make things a little bit more secure. You know, I know it's kind of a complicated process and nicknames may not be the best option for you. I mean, it may create more barriers for students getting logged on and into these meetings than it's worth, but that is a way currently you can keep your meetings more secure and the links will become inactive once you're done.